everybody. It is high noon, and this is uh, LA2M. My name is Derek Maribon. How's everybody doing today? Good. All right. We got a full crowd here. It almost feels like we're at an AFC Ann Arbor soccer game or something. It's, like, yeah. it's a nice crowd, so thank you for coming. Um, AFC Ann Arbor, yeah. Anybody been to an AFC Ann Arbor game? The soccer team? Yeah, get your season tickets. Go check them out. They're great. Um, our speaker is one of the owners. Uh, we got Bilal's, Bilal's an owner in the crowd. So we, anyways, it's a locally owned soccer team. Really cool stuff. But this is LA2M. And we are a 501c3 marketing education. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization designed to bring great programming. And uh, obviously it's working because we got some really cool people in the crowd. That's all of you. So thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Um, so LA2M, we used to meet weekly. We've been doing this now for... About eight, eight years, Jim? Yep. Eight years. We've been doing this for eight years. And, um, all right. <laughs> sorry, we used to use live streaming. We've been doing this for eight years, and we live stream it around the world. So that's uh, the Rogers live streaming. So there's a lot of people, especially in Iceland, that this is very popular, LA2M. Um, speaking of which, if you want to communicate with people, use the hashtag LA2M. It'd be great to see some tweeters from the program. So use the hashtag LA2M and uh, tweet out what you learned today. Uh, we have a brilliant speaker. So we, we meet monthly, we've been doing this for eight years, and um, I don't know, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. So, let me see, just to give you an idea of format, is there anyone here for your very first LA2M? First timers? Okay, well welcome folks. Just to give you an idea of format, we talk for a couple minutes at the front, we introduce our speaker, who talks for approximately 30 minutes, there will be some time for Q&A, and then at 12.45, everybody gets to introduce themselves. So you can briefly say who you are and what you do, and then pass the microphone. And we always finish by one o'clock. So we do introductions in 15 minutes, you're out of here by one. We wanna respect your time. Uh, if you want lunch, make sure to order. Hopefully the kitchen can handle this large crowd, and hopefully they can. But um, yeah, and then just pay for your lunch on your own. So I think that's about it. Jim, you wanna talk a little bit? I always wanna talk. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Musial. Um, as Derek said, welcome to LA2M. We're glad you're here. It's great to have a full house. Um, LA2M happens because of crowds like this, and, and we're really fortunate. We have great speakers coming in here. Mike's here today and is going to knock your socks off. And we have that every month. So uh, we hope for you first timers that you'll come back and visit us again. A lot of you are here regularly, and some of you have been away for a while, and it's good to see you back. So we're happy you're here. Um, LA2M exists because of people like you and our sponsors. Uh, each month we have a sponsor, and this month's sponsor is, we don't have a sponsor. So this could be you standing up here telling us about your company. So um, if you're interested, um, please see me afterwards and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. We're looking for corporate sponsors for, uh, for the rest of the year. If your organization would love to uh, get behind LA2M and uh, be up here each month telling us a little bit about your company, we have uh, emails that go out to over 2,000 qualified marketing people. So it's a great opportunity to get your name, your company's name in front of people. So I'd love to talk to you about it. So see me afterwards. Um, we're, we're happy you're here. And uh, we'll have to keep bringing you great programs. So welcome. Thanks, Jim. Um, a couple of points of interest before we get going. LA2M did just launch a new site recently. So feel free to visit LA2M.org. If any of you are not on our email newsletter list, you can sign up right there on the website. So please do that. And uh, we're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatnot. Uh, it's a pretty large community because we've been doing this for so long. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce our speaker. Uh, this guy is a longtime friend of mine. I've had the privilege of uh, teach with him at Michigan State University. So he taught the new media driver's license with me for a few years. He now teaches his own class on both YouTube marketing and pay-per-click marketing at MSU. And um, so he's doing great things there, but he's been kind of a fixture around Ann Arbor. I'm sure a lot of you know uh, Mike Lawrence. He's he's part of he's from Poland, which is cool, right? He, uh, he I think he was part of the first Google in Poland, right? And then he came here to Ann Arbor. We've been lucky to have him. He's got uh, some really wonderful boys. He's a huge sports fan, and he, in addition to being part owner of AFC Ann Arbor, which is cool. Um, he heads up Google Live Events and Ticketing, which is, I think, one of the best jobs you could have. So he works with uh, sports teams around the globe.
you are here, so, so that's, that's a start. Okay, so uh, you know it's a Google marketing video because there's a cute baby. So, so definitely you know, makes you all go, ah, oh, it's so cool. But uh, as marketers, I think that's kind of the interesting challenge that we have. Like we all know, as consumers, we, we use our phones all the time. We use them in a very different way. So as marketers, as, as business people, as, as, uh, as uh, individuals who are responsible for talking to our consumers, potential consumers, how can we, how should we adapt to this micro moment face? So that's kind of what, what, what I'll talk about. And because I represent Google and Google is a data-driven company, I'll dump lots of data on you. So, but I'll, I'll try to make it fun. So, okay, first thing. We unlock our phones 150 times every day. On average, we interact with our phones only about one minute, 12 seconds per each interaction. So again, you compare it to sitting down on the couch and watching TV for two hours. How are marketers adapting to the change? 150 times a day. 99% of time, right, I think right now, phones are within our reach. Uh, actually, to wean myself off of that, I decided to charge my phone on the first floor away from my, from my bedroom. And that's the only way I can force myself not to check my phone all the time. Uh, yes, many of those interactions are what you could call non-commercial in nature. So anything from texting Jim to checking time to, to doing some things, to texting somebody else, to responding to emails, to seeing the little annoying update, something's happening, somebody's tweeting at me. There's desire to, to engage. The communication is a huge part of, of our micro moments of our mobile uh, presence. But throughout the day, there are all of those commercial interactions which are dispersed. So it's anything from finding brunch place. How many of you looked up on your phone exactly what time and where this event is happening? Maybe some of you were wondering, hey, will there be a food? What is the Yelp? You know, uh, uh, what, are the, what are the stars for for this place? By the way, I know it's 12 o'clock, uh, which means in Ireland it's 5 o'clock. We are at an Irish pub and I don't see one beer. <laughs> and you call yourselves marketers. Uh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this. All right, so, so all of those moments. So really when you think of kind of the the, from the marketing perspective, the, the cross-section or the opportunity, if you will, of mobile first micro moments is this. It's a combination and a cross-section of intent, context, and immediacy. Because when we have a question, we want answers right away. When we see this interesting billboard, we want to find out right away when, in my space, when I hear about Weezer going on sale on the radio, I want to use my phone to either buy tickets right away or to verify exactly what time, when, where, maybe update with an update on Facebook, try to get some of my friends to go to a concert with me. So that's the immediacy. Context. Amazing thing about having mobile phones and having the, all of those phones being GPS enabled is that as marketer, not only do you know what somebody's interested in, you also know where they are. So kind of easy example, when somebody searches for pizza, if it's noon on a weekday, they're probably looking for a quick fix lunch, maybe going to grab a slice, maybe looking for a, a pizza place near their office or near their phone is a great approach. If it's during a big game, 6, 7 p.m., delivery is probably a much more interesting marketing approach. It's the same search, pizza, but the context, when, how, where, allows you to really tailor your message in a very, very different and much more powerful way. So, as I mentioned, number of stats. Uh, we kind of broke down the micro moments, I'm gonna try to stay away from the, from the computer, into the I want to watch what I'm into moments, I want to know moments, I want to go, I want to do, and I want to buy. And uh, you'll have this presentation, so I don't have to kind of talk about every slide, but some of the highlights. Uh, I want to watch people watching videos on their phones like crazy. I know many marketers still are thinking about big TV screens as the primary mode of communication. All of this, that, the studies have, have, have been done actually point to the fact that people watching videos on their phone are more engaged and less distracted. Because think about it, you probably hold the phone. You look at the phone. There's nothing else on the screen, it's 100% video. 
whereas watching it on a desktop or watching on TV, there are just way more distractions. Uh, if YouTube were a cable channel, would have been the largest cable channel with the largest reach uh, in the US globally. And over half of all of the views are coming from, from YouTube. Uh, 2x increase in near me searches over the past year. Right now, you don't even have to say near, near me. So when you're looking for a florist, you just type in florist. And it gives you the near me information because our technology understands that that certain local searches, people are looking for things that are local to the nature. So kind of the interesting paradox of the World Wide Web is that as technology improves and mobile devices become primary modes of the internet, it actually becomes more and more local because people are trying to find out where are things and places around them. 91% uh, of smartphone users turn to their phones for ideas while doing a task. I'm sure you have seen that. Especially playing with kids. Uh, their imagination is so bigger, so much better than mine. Like, I, I need an aid. I need to look for a phone to figure out like, what to do. Or, or what, and actually, I'll talk about it. The how to or do it yourself, the fastest growing category on videos, especially on mobile devices. And then finally, 29% increase in mobile conversions in just pass right? So I know for the longest time, uh, the biggest complaint or the I will not invest in mobile was it doesn't convert. We have all of the data that shows it doesn't convert because platforms aren't there. Consumers overwhelmingly would prefer to buy on the device that they use most frequently, which is phone, but it's just cumbersome, it's not easy, so they're being forced to migrate. But as websites become much better, conversions become much better, the, the conversion rates on mobile devices increase significantly. All right, so how to break it up. So you think of it, be there, be useful, be quick, and then connect the dots. And in this section, I'll, I'll just talk about lots of case studies. Uh, I'll give you a resource, you can read each one of those in, in, in much more depth. So really my purpose right now is to just give you kind of the high level, hey, here's somebody that's doing interesting thing in those aspects. So be there. It seems so simple, right? Be there when consumers are. And really that's mostly about search. The, I, I heard somebody say currently the, or isn't the purpose of traditional marketing is really to get people excited enough to want to find out more of their time. So when you think about it again, traditional advertising, print, outdoor, billboard, TV, very infrequently, very rarely if ever, will we as consumers stop what we're doing and respond to our advertiser's message. Hopefully, we'll be intrigued enough, we'll remember that when it's convenient for us with our time, that we'll get our phone, get our laptop, and try to find out more information. Another aspect is just verify. Verify claims that advertisers put out there. Uh, we're becoming much more sophisticated and less trusting consumers because we have access to information. My favorite example, and I just, I can't stand it, but it's a great example, there's a billboard when you drive from here to East Lansing and the time I go to, to teach, uh, painless dentistry. I don't know if you saw the billboard, there's a nice billboard, painless dentistry, and it says right there, voted number one on mission. Asterix. If you slow down, or actually pull over and read what's under that raster, asterisk, it says, by our office staff. <laughs> <laughs> but again, people verify, they want to find out a little more. So just showing up there is really important. 51% uh, of smartphone users have discovered a new company and product when they were conducting a search. So again, think about it, you're looking for a product, and you might have a company in mind, but there are other businesses, competitors, that if they're in search, you start learning about them and actually thinking about them. Uh, you actually get a shot at the competitor's customers. One in three phone users purchase from a company or brand other than the one they started search. So no, I don't actually, I'll talk about why. Lots of it is less about flashy marketing, but actually about usability and being useful and being consumer friendly and giving the answers an easier way than somebody that, that people were originally looking for. And then finally, brand awareness. I know search, mobile search, it's considered mostly direct response platform. Uh, there are studies and, and there's lots of data that actually proves that it drives brand awareness. And actually, what we do right now with Google, we can combine, kind of we talk about the brand lift search. 
So, so we can run campaigns and see what increases in value of searches for your brand, for your product, uh, the, the test versus control audiences had. So, so there's proven lift in brand. So again, you just have to be there. When people are looking for you, your product, your competitor, if you're not there, it's really hard to, to start engaging with consumers, especially if you are targeting the millennials, younger audiences. For, for the millennials, if you're not online, you don't exist. All right, so a couple of examples. Uh, I travel a lot. Uh, uh, I love this example, Red Roof Inn. So they, they realized that one of the opportunities that they had is uh, people whose flights get canceled. So there's something like you know, 20,000 or, or thousands of flights every day, uh, every night that are being canceled. And lots of hotels are trying to get those stranded business travelers to stay at their hotel versus the other. <coughs> Uh, it's, it's a really hard market to, to target to because you don't know when the flight's canceled until it's canceled. Usually there's very little lead time. Uh, the airports can change. Uh, the weather patterns are unpredictable and they dictate lots of cancellations. So it's really hard to do it via traditional market. Well, what, what Red Roof Inn decided to do is they used some of the, some of the API data and they actually they pulled the cancellation flights data, which is Ready available, and they use that data to determine dynamically where to target via search and where to run keywords like stranded at the airport. They also use basically they only targeted uh, airports that they knew they were cancellations at. So when people were stuck on their phone trying to figure out hotel, Hilton, where to stay, cheap hotel, Red Roof Inn had a very specific message and specific offer for them. So as a consumer, you, you actually saw it was something that was relevant to you. And even though they don't have too many hotels right immediately at the airport, they have seen nice increase in, in, in bookings and conversions because of this strategy. Again, they were thinking about being there in a non-traditional way. Uh, we are in Michigan. I have to use automotive example. But actually, I'm, I'm gonna use this one. So, so this is Fiat. Uh, after 28 years of being away, decided to come to the US. And yes, they had TV campaigns and they had lots of video campaigns. They actually went very heavily on search. So how do you introduce a Fiat, a little car? You probably don't see, but here this, the search is a small city car. So again, they understood their target audience, lots of millennials, people that live in, in cities that look for smaller, nimble vehicles. And they started to, to, to drive a search campaign outside of their brand term to really introduce the new car, the new brand in this market. They did it first before doing video campaign, before then doing TV campaign, before doing print and others. So again, thinking from reverse, start with people that are looking for your, for the brand, for the product or category that, that you're interested in, and then go mass market. They also have learned planning. They understood what type of features, for example, people that were searching for those types of cars were more interested in. They did A-B studies on some of their YouTube campaigns, and they were able to inform the best creative based on the digital testing. A uh, couple of years ago, there was lots of talk about big box stores actually blocking or thinking about blocking Wi-Fi. I know Best Buy and some others were really worried about showcasing. You went to the store and then you ended up buying online because it was cheaper. Well, Sephora was one of those retailers originally. They didn't want people to search for, for makeup products knowing that they usually charge premium. You can get most of this, those products actually cheaper online. But then they realized something different. They actually observed people, young, young mostly women, who were at the store and they realized that women were using their phones not to comparison shop, but to find out the exact shade of red that they used. Maybe to consult with their friends. Maybe to find out the health risks or benefits of those products. So using that insight, they totally changed their approach and they actually offered many stores free Wi-Fi. And they offered people help and they created this mobile first in interface that allowed consumers to pick exactly what they wanted and then show the sales clerk on their phone what is the product they're looking for, the one that matches their, 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 their preferences or the one that they had been buying in the past. A total reverse of thinking and rather than trying to protect consumers from doing what they will do anyways, which is never a winning strategy, to actually change your approach and embrace it and try to be useful and be where they are. Speaking of being useful, we use search engines and phones to find out more information. Uh, oftentimes, on, on a consumer side, 
we, we don't think of giving more information, we just want to get people to get excited and then buy from us. Well, consumers want to get more information. Before micro moments, Google talked about zero moment of truth. This whole concept about with access to information comes much bigger appetite for consumers to learn and to develop their own ideas and to at least feel that they made a choice versus the choice was made for them. So to some of the examples, 73% of consumers say they regularly, that, that regularly getting useful information from advertiser is the most important attribute. <coughs> regularly getting useful information is the most important attribute. 51% uh, of smartphone users have bought from a brand other than their intended one because the information they provided was useful. I'll show you, I think Home Depot has a great example I'll talk about in a little bit. And then finally, people are 61% overwhelmingly more likely to buy from companies who customize mobile information to their location. Because again, it's all about being useful. If I'm looking for car dealers here, don't show me the dealer in California just because he or she is the biggest or has the highest volume. It's simple and it works. So I want to watch what I'm into moment. Uh, clear and clear, they understood their audience. And they, they also understood that it's not you know, somebody talking at you about the benefits of, of uh, different products, but actually, you know, it's, it's the, uh, you can see very well, but it's, it's the like set. So it's, so it's a group of, of, of young girls discussing kind of, you know, the, 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 the stress of, of having a pimple before the, 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 the deaths and all of, all of those things. So they created lots of great short videos that addressed some of those issues and actually gave some of the tips. And, and they saw great results with engaging the right audience and then actually making some of the purchases. Uh, how to videos. There's so many of those right now. It actually started with uh, YouTube, uh, celebrities. So there were just people showing and putting videos of how to put a makeup on and how to put a scarf on in different ways. And brands decided to jump on the bandwagon. So, so, so Unilever, again, created all things her YouTube video, providing lots of, not even tutorials, but just lots of kind of small videos about how to care for her, how to come up with this great cut, how to get the color that you want, uh, what to do about the humidity, all of those things. So again, they, they went to video, and, and they did it in a, in a meaningful, useful way. So we don't have to watch 27 minutes of the video. It's a two, three minutes, kind of the, the, the bite-sized information that you can search very quickly, and when you start watching it, you get the answers to your question right away. You don't have to wait for the spokesperson to get to halfway through the instructional to get your, answer, your, your question answered. I talked a little bit about this one, it's, it's a Home Depot. So this is do it yourself. Home Depot probably generated right now thousands of short videos telling you how to do all of the basic and advanced things in your home. So it's anything from, actually my favorite, I, I, I totally suck at like the home improvement stuff. Uh, I planted a rose a couple years ago and I was just like, oh, I should probably cut it. When do I cut it? And, and the rose bush that I, I bought at Home Depot had a little barcode. So I, I just scanned it, and actually it was like a three minute video of how to cut the rose bush. But I, I just loved the, the simplicity of it. And I realized I was cutting it at the wrong time of the year. So anyway, so, so Home Depot is doing all of those things, and, and they're, they're creating lots of those videos. So, so how to change the carpet, how to change the doorknob, how to do all of those things. And, and those are, if you haven't had a chance, uh, watch those videos. Uh, very rarely do they have this very direct, and when you go to Home Depot, you'll get 50% off. Lots of it is just information. And yes, they have branding, it's a subtle branding, but they know if they provide the right information, people will end up buying from the company, from the retailer that actually cared about cre creating that kind of the, the right content. It's a great example, and they keep on adding videos seemingly on a daily basis. And then something very simple, if somebody searches for you or is using your website on mobile device, and they actually want to buy, they're in the I want to buy moment, just give them options. Don't force them to buy through only one channel. So, insurance is an example where most of their ads, and again, it's very simple, Google does it all the time, you can target your ads, so if somebody searches for me on mobile, I want those ads to be the click to call. 
So if somebody searches on the phone and you know it's easier to convert somebody via phone call than a click to your website, give them an option to call you. And actually then you can track all of the, the, the call volume, you can set up unique number, and all of those things. If somebody wants to find out more information, try to think of pre-populating some of the feeds. And, and again, be, be useful and then be quick, which I'll talk about, and optimize for mobile behavior first. Speaking of being quick, I'm sure you all have done it. You find this interesting website on your mobile device and you click on it, and then it's loading. And so, so what do you do? Do you put your life on hold? and hope for this one company, because there's probably only one in the world that can answer a question? No. No, you, you, you revise your search. You lose a consumer. Or you download this great app that somebody told you about. And then the first experience just is awful, or maybe something's not loading. Do you give this app a second chance? You just delete it, right? So being quick is critical. 40%, I mean, it's a huge number, almost half. 40% of consumers will abandon a site if it takes more than three seconds to load. So I know there's lots of desire for, for the, the, the creative types in the room. I, I apologize, but there's so much desire to push so much cool things into mobile. Speed is the critical component, speed and simplicity. If you want to amuse and amaze somebody with great videos and, and, and you know, interactive intro, for some reason, all of the ad agencies are so guilty of this, right? You go to the website and you have to sit through 30 seconds of look how great we are and how creative we are, because you actually get into the useful part. It will kill you on mobile. So doing it kind of you know, in a sim simple way, making sure it doesn't load forever, is critical. 29% uh, of smartphone users will immediately switch to another site if it's too clumsy or slow. And again, it's so easy to switch to somebody else. It's not like you know, I, I walked into the store and I feel uncomfortable, awkward, just walking out because it's all this shelf. I'll just change it right away. <coughs> and then, so, okay, so think about the first and the third data point. 40% of people will leave the site. The rest that stays, one in five, will never return to this website. No matter what you do, if you redesign your website, if you say we are new and improved, their experience is critical. Same applies with apps. It's so hard to regain somebody's trust in mobile environment. People just have way too many options. So some of the examples. Uh, it is cumbersome to fill out all of the forms to get a quote for insurance. Right? There's so many questions. Well, Progressive was able to figure out in a very simple way. So just enter your zip code. Actually, sometimes they pre-populate the zip code based on GPS, where your phone is in. Uh, just put a car, just very simple way. The, the way to engage it is, is, is critical. So uh, totally changing and streamlining the, the, the UI of their app uh, increased their conversions significantly. <coughs> Zillow. Uh, they actually created this, this very cool functionality. It's a GPS kind of aware app. So when, when families, when prospective buyers are walking around the neighborhood because that's usually what we do when we are looking for a house, we want to get a feel for the neighborhood. So when you walk around the neighborhood, you can just pull up Zillow app and it will tell you where you are. And then it will show you all houses on the market or off the market in the three, five, 10 mile radius. Not very complex, but a great way to really engage with consumers in a, in a useful and quick way. They're not asking you to enter your information. You don't have to tell them the exact radius or even the school neighborhood that you're looking for. It's just know where you are. <coughs> How about I want it later moments? So yes, I had to plug in AFC and Arbor. So AFC and Arbor is actually doing a very good job leveraging videos. So hopefully many of you right now are, are familiar with TrueView videos on YouTube, on mobile, where basically you can skip the app. So this app will Oh, that this ad will skip in five, four, three, two, one. If you don't want to engage with the app, just skip and you get to your video. Well, those five seconds are marketer's gold mine. Because, as in this example, before the ad skips, and you can see very well, but there's actually there's a message. Memberships available now, $89. So even for everybody that skips and, and chooses not to watch the ad, you still drive awareness. And, oh, by the way, you only pay when users choose not to skip the app. 
So this is kind of the, the cost per click uh, approach taken to video. So again, as a marketer, if somebody chooses to watch the ad, meaning they're pr probably a high value consumer, you pay for them. And, and right now, because there are so many videos on YouTube, you pay anywhere from six to 12 cents cost per view. If somebody chooses not to engage with the ad, you still get the first five seconds, then you can talk to them. And in this, in this example, uh, we were targeting people that watch sports content on video, sometimes more specifically, people that watch soccer videos uh, within a 40 mile radius of uh, hallway field where we play our home games. So again, sometimes people have only five seconds. Don't force them to sit through 30 seconds. Don't force them to do something they don't want. Get the information. Uh, and the, the wanted later moments, you can also retarget. So you can retarget anybody that chose to watch your video. And then you can give them more of a direct response offer at, at a different time that's more convenient for them. And then finally, connect the dots. And that's, that's the hard part. How do you make sure that somebody that watches this cool Home Depot video actually ends up buying on Home Depot in store? How do you ensure that somebody that, uh, that shared a great local video about, about a soccer team will actually end up going to a game? So again, some stats and then a couple of examples. 90% of consumers say they use multiple screens every day. Like this should be like one of those well done type of moments. Again, as marketers, sometimes we forget. It's not all about desktop strategy. It's not all about mobile strategy. Actually, most of the research starts with mobile. I'm talking about most live events. But people st usually start the research on mobile, then they continue the research on desktop, and oftentimes make a purchase on desktop. But you can't discount one versus the other. Lots of examples that we use is if you have great mobile strategy, but you don't have basics on desktop, your competitors will, will eat your lunch. If you totally abandon mobile and only concentrate on desktop, how are you expected to build brand awareness? Well, if people start the research in early process and, and that's where they're being influenced, inspired, that's, this is the first kind of introduction to the brand. Digital drives people to store. 87% of consumers do research before entering the store. And I don't remember I mentioned the, the, the near research is increasing 2x and continue to increase. Uh, Google's actually testing some very interesting, and I'll talk about it briefly, uh, ways for, for physical store owners to, to track, hey, if somebody saw my ad or maybe clicked on, on my ad on mobile device, did they, were they in the store? Did, were they physically inside the store? And if they were, maybe there should be some kind of a conversion assigned to it. And then mobile is the new shopping assistant. 82% turn to phones to help them make product decisions. And if I were to, to pull you, I'd see the same thing. So you, any, any, any shopping decision we make, we want to find out more information. We don't want to wait till we're at home or in the office. We can just get our phone and find out more information. So a few examples. Shutterfly. They, they understood They understood that most people were actually doing research on their mobile. So they use Google's cross-device conversion. There are other uh, technologies that allow you to do cross-device conversion, uh, cookies, cookies, people, sign in, log in, log out, uh, start tracking those things. Uh, uh, they, are, they also were able to push some of the offers. Uh, again, in ticketing space, you see lots of people in ticketing doing lots of offers and pushing, hey, if you buy through, mobile, through our mobile app, we'll give you 20% or $20 off. So they understand that people will cross-convert and try to get them into kind of the, the, the funnel. Uh, 1000 bulbs.com. I had no idea that company existed, but they had a case study. So again, they, they actually uh, used some of the, the, the website call conversions. So again, this is the setting up a unique 800 number, enabling or tying, tying in the number to, to the AdWords campaign, and then tracking. Not only tracking the, the value, but actually which type of, types of products sell better via phone versus online. How can you tailor that to, to then running more effective search campaigns? Uh, how can you train your, your call center people to, to be able to answer questions and actually to increase the, the, the average size of the, uh, of, of the basket? A great case study of a no, it's, it's not that well-known company. And then Sprint, is actually, and this, this is in beta right now, but, but there's AdWords has the store visits reporting. So again, with GPS, we can actually determine 
how many people visit your, your store. And lots of it is based on location and time spent. So if you are at spread stores and you spend there more than, let's say, five minutes, chances are you're not just passing by. If we can help you understand that that was the person that started research a couple months ago on maybe a new data phone or maybe a new tablet or a phone, and they consider a number of choices, but ultimately they ended up at your store, that's a great information, that's a great insight. So connecting the dots to a physical store is something that you probably hear a lot about this year. All right, so to sum it up, we have a checklist. Everybody likes checklists, right? So be there, just identify your moments. What are the moments? Where are people, consumers, where can they need you the most? Be useful, tap into your audience passions. I, I love the second one. This is about snackable educational content. So if you have this great video, but it's a little too lengthy, and again, you're thinking mobile, so anything over two and a half, three minutes, it's too lengthy. Cut it up into two videos, optimize each video separately, so again, when I'm looking for answer to my specific question, I can get it in an easy way. And I, I didn't talk about the, the whole earned component of those short videos. People actually sharing it with others, putting it on their, on their social media platforms, tweeting it out, and so on and so forth. Uh, be quick. Eliminate unnecessary steps. Uh, something that uh, we recommend to our clients, so first of all, uh, and again, I'm defaulting to sports or ticketing, we realize that most of marketing managers on the ticketing side haven't bought a ticket in a couple years, because that's what they work at. No, they can call somebody up, they give them tickets. Chances are, in your business, you haven't done your business in a while, because you have access to the inventory. So, either pretend to be a consumer, or just ask somebody to do things that you think is very basic. Like, hey, how would you find hours of operations of my store? Or oh, I'm trying to sell this, you know, this big forklift. How would you start searching? So actually ask somebody that's detached from having to market the product and see what they do on the phone. And then eliminate steps that you think are cute or you think are great, but nobody's using. Uh, Google Analytics, uh, Omniture, great tools. They show you exactly where's the biggest bounce rate and which sites do people spend too much time. Sometimes people congratulate themselves, oh, somebody spent seven minutes on this one site. Well, because they were lost. <laughs> So again, just try to figure out exactly the flow and then eliminate what's unnecessary. Uh, and then connect the dots. And it's not only technology measuring, but also the last thing, the team silos. So still, like I, I, I've been in digital marketing for, for, for like 15, 16 years. I still remember when the, the online marketers were tied in with IT people because it's internet. I mean, we're way past that. Everybody understands the digital marketing is form of marketing. But then when it comes to mobile, again, it's a cycle. What's mobile? Is it call center or is it marketing? Uh, because it's phone, so it should be a call center. So again, eliminate internal silos. Uh, think consumer first. She starts her day on a mobile device. Uh, probably looks, looks up on, on Facebook, checks the weather. Uh, then maybe finds or looks for some, some other information. Uh, when we drive, come on, anytime there's a red light. I can see, I look around. Most of us are on our phones here. Uh, at lunchtime, breaks, like we, we spend so much time on the phone that connecting the dots and just forgetting about what's, what's mobile, what's desktop, what's store. How are you answering the questions for the consumer? So, final. Thank you very much, Twitter. Uh, my team has a Google Live event, Twitter handle. And as I mentioned, think with Google, a great resource, all of the case studies, all of the information about uh, micro moments are listed here. So if you're interested more in that, if you want to find those case studies or some other others, I, I definitely encourage you to just check out Think with Google, uh, find more information, and go get her. Go get him. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. For one, maybe two questions. Anybody have a burning question? I'm giving the microphone. Any questions? Any questions? No questions? This is the first time I've heard, oh, I haven't heard Bill ask a question. <laughs> he, he's being nice. Um, great presentation, Mike. Uh, just a general question. Now that everybody's uh, engagement, whether it's mobile or web, is broken down to such a micro small unit of time, 
what happens in the future? Does it stay this way? How, how small can you continue to break it down? Or what, do you think it will change where we are at that point? I, so I actually think it will continue to, to get smaller and smaller because people will get more answers. So, so for me, the proxy is such. We used to search in a very different way than we do right now. As search became better, we trusted more, and we give more searches, and we spend less time filtering through information. So a couple of years ago, people still were going to page two and three of search results. Nobody does it right now. So, so I think that's what will happen. The content will get better. Marketers will understand consumers' behavior. So the 150 will probably go to 175, but the minute 12 might actually shrink to enormous. Yes. So uh, I'm guessing most, most of the people in this room are small business owners. Um, how can this information help <coughs> someone from a small, I mean, we obviously can't build an app or a mobile uh, marketing plan with our means. So what can we do from, with your information from a smaller scale and get into the game? So, so actually, the, the first thing, and, and for me, it reminds me 10, 12 years ago. Many people in a small and medium-sized businesses said, hey, we can't afford to build a website. The website was only for the ports, for the big ones, and it was all about, you know, we, website is too expensive. So, so you, you absolutely can afford to build an app. There are, there are lots of templates and lots of kind of the app providers to provide some, some basic things. The app versus mobile side, app is only for people who are consumers. It's very hard to persuade somebody that barely knows that just dating to download an app. App is like a ring that you put on somebody's finger. Mm -hmm. Mobile website is the first thing. So you have to engage with somebody, you have to give them a reason to allocate precious real estate on their phone to download an app. So I'd say, mm -hmm. if you have to choose, work on your mobile UI, give app to somebody that actually is ready to, to engage with you more frequently. Feel free, by the way. Let's get one more round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was a great talk. It was a great talk. So, speaking of micro moments, um, there's those micro moments where your server has to handle 75 people in a room. So, I appreciate the service, and uh, let's give her a round of applause. And thank you for your patience. I see some people still eating, so thank you for your patience. I'm sure it took a while to get food up. But, so now we do the exciting thing, which is a monthly miracle where we all introduce ourselves and we finish in 15 minutes, right? You guys think we can do it? I think we can do it, all right? Um, so we're gonna start up front. You ready? We do ask that you stand up so we can see you and be brief and then pass the mic and we'll make it all the way around the room. So here you go. Uh, my name's Robin Whitty and I am a marketing manager out at Washtenaw Community College. Don McRiley, and until Friday, I am the executive director of marketing at Washington Community College. <laughs> Diane Waterhouse, I'm a marketing manager at WCC. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got this way. Sorry? Sorry, it's all right. I'm familiar with your role. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Sakish Malnak. I'm a CEO here at a local healthcare technology firm, Next Services, and also co founder of Fanelope, something we'll talk about next week. Roger Rail, a venture catalyst. I help with a lot of networking groups here in town and uh, do a lot of live streaming recording of video. Uh, I'm Ariana, I'm a junior at Eden Dance Data Science. My name's Mike Murphy, I'm a marketing manager at 618 South Main. I'm Max Sauber, I teach marketing at Eastern Michigan University. We have uh, a uh, nationally recognized master's degree program in the integrated marketing communication with the top awards in the past eight years. Hi, everybody. My name is Luis Escudero. I am the owner of Natural Products LLC. We have a clean company. Uh, we use organic products in, in our products. If you need more, please call me. Joyce Williams, Public Affairs Manager, Victor and Alley Ambulance. Sarah, what's up? Real estate agent at Reinhardt. Praveena Ramaswamy, I have my own company called Mama Swami Connects and Consults, and I consult with a nonprofits in the area. Hi, Jim Elliott. I represent two uh, digital engagement advertising companies, uh, Skipstone and Soft Media. My name is Kendra Therio. I work at the Innovo Group in Indianapolis. I'm Chris Stereo, husband, uh, Kendra, um, and I work with a research and strategy firm in Ann Arbor called Shepherd Advisors. Hi, I'm Jeff Hall, I'm a 
I'm Nicole Ray. I work at Ignite XDS in Brighton, and I'm a content developer. I'm Meredith Petriella. I also work at Ignite XDS, and I'm the work for manager. Hello, I'm Kayla. Um, I also work at Ignite XDS, and I'm the director of brand strategy. Hi, I'm Lisa McDonald, and Jill <coughs> work from Tea House down the street, and also uh, so teahouse.com, and also um, here directly representing Orderf.com. Sean Whitehouse, Marketing Coordinator at the Center for Automotive Research. Hi, i uh, Shamir Rosari. I'm a digital marketing consultant, and I help uh, young companies grow. Hi, my name's Alicia McCollum, and I'm a realtor, and I work for Reinhardt. Hi, my name is Susan Heron, and I'm a mortgage consultant with Andrew Mortgage. Hi, Jeff Bielis, founder and uh, owner of Arbor Pines Marketing, a new uh, marketing organization here focusing on small businesses and machines. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy. I'm from Dolly Bell Copying, your local digital print shop, and I'm also on the board of LA2M. So everybody come back next month. Hi, I'm Sean Galanti, general manager of Dolly Bell Copying. Hi, I'm Linda Baker. I'm business development for JBS, which is a nonprofit. Thank you. Excellent presentation. I got some great ideas today. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Paslowski. I'm the global marketing and communications manager for Ricardo Software. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Musial again, and I am a digital strategist. I work with companies to optimize their websites and mobile devices. So if you'd like some help with that, I'd love to talk to you. <coughs> Hello, I'm um, Charlie Gleistra. I am the account manager at Ingenix Digital Marketing with Derek. Hi, uh, my name is Brianna Weiss. I'm the marketing coordinator at um, Ingenix Digital Marketing. And my name is Courtney Morrow, and I'm the graphic designer at Ingenix Digital Marketing. Hi, I'm Laura Crawford. I am a freelance writer focusing on content and content marketing. Hi, my name is Jordan Beecham, and I do marketing at Texas Builders. Hi, I'm Kathy Wilder. I work with Ford Investment Strategies, and I'm also the secretary of the downtown Hanover Kiwanis, and we're forming a new group of young professionals. Excellent presentation, too. Thanks. Hi, I'm Bob Ferran. I'm the owner of Bob Ferran Photography, and I do commercial and advertising. Hi, I'm Steve Byer. I try to do very little work. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan Crosby. I'm a real estate agent with the Charles Reinhardt Company and huge AFC soccer fan. And if Bilal was still here, he would tell you to get your season tickets now. I got mine already. They're really awesome, so get yours. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paula Crosby. I'm an executive area manager and independent consultant with Arbonne International, which is a health and wellness and beauty company. Hello, I'm Allison Katsunika, and I'm also an independent consultant with Arvana. Hi, I'm Francis Bolling, or Printing Marketing. Uh, we do solutions for uh, design, printing, and special email services. Hi, I'm Deborah Petrov at United Way of Washtenaw County. One of the things that we have coming up is the Carver Purse event on March 7th. It's uh, raising money for uh, self-sufficiency for women, lots of purses, uh, live auction, and lots of other things going on. Hello, my name is Erin McNear, and I am the studio manager at Damien Pro Design Group, which is an architecture firm here in Ann Arbor. Hi, I'm Sheila Dogan. This is Faye Malator. We own a home care agency called Senior Helpers here in Ann Arbor. Hi, I'm Nancy Rojas Fairley. I'm from the Jackson area, and I'm a marketing and creative consultant. Hello, Patrick Brockman, and I'm an independent PR. A practitioner here in the local area working primarily with technology companies. Hello, my name is Thomas Malash. I'm the author of The Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising, published by Entrepreneur Press. Recently moved back into town and have been specializing in hyper local, really affordable Facebook clicks on mobile. So I enjoyed the presentation a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm Angela and I a lot of hats in marketing at Washington Community College. Hi, uh, my name is Greg Rambo. I own GForce 2, it's a manufacturing threat firm. And if you need solar installed or you want to talk about it, give me a call. 
Amy Grambo, Director of Orange Egg Advertising, our local marketing and advertising firm. I'm uh, in Ann Arbor, now full service, um, or a la carte, I guess. And I'm Allison Kruger, I'm the Creative Director for Orange Egg Advertising. I'm Peter Gargara, I just moved back to the area, and I'm a freelance media producer. Sonia McDowell, Web Designer, Washington Community College. I'm Matthew Heddle, I'm the Director of Web Services at Washington Community College. I am Curtis Schnellheim, Frog Print Studios, and I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer. Eric Maraban, uh, President and Founder of Angelix Digital Marketing. You saw some of my team back there. We do a lot of lead generation for companies trying to grow their business. Um, I'm also CEO and co-founder of Fandalo with Satish here. Uh, Satish is going to be our speaker next next month. He uh, he's really he's a really great guy. He runs a, another big company, but he's helping with Fandalo, and he's going to be talking about five things every startup should know. Um, Satish does a lot of work with uh, U of University of Michigan Ross School Business, the accelerators in town. So it's going to be a really good talk, um, especially for startups and people that are in that field. Um, I also wanted to thank all the volunteers. We have people who helped at the door today and helped with checking and greeting people. Thank you for doing that. This is wonderful because it just makes my life easier and it makes the experience much better for everyone who got here. So uh, thank you to all the volunteers. You did a great job. Yes, Jim? We have five more minutes if there was a couple questions that didn't get answered. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll have five minutes worth of Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do, we do. Um, Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. So the next LA2M, it's, see this month we got pushed back because of restaurant week and conflicts with counters. Next month it's gonna happen quickly, so it's February 10th. So put it in your calendars. Uh, February 10th is gonna be the five things every startup should know with, with Satish. Um, I'm gonna let people just network on their own, they can network, but uh, yes. Oh yeah, where can we get copies of that? I'll send it to Derek. Yeah. So yeah, anybody that's interested, just just let, let LA2M know, yeah. and we'll distribute those. We can, we can put it up on the website. We'll we'll send out a notice when it's ready. Okay. Um, yeah. But let's give uh, Mike Lawrence one big round of applause again. And I just I encourage you all to you know keep making a positive impact in your community, keep helping others, make money in the process, and uh, come back to LA Twin because we it's not as fun when you're not here. You know what I'm Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. All right. See you next time. You're free to mingle and. <laughs> <laughs> you're good.